Hello everyone and welcome to the video lecture series of mobile application development. In this session, we are going to talk about that how can we bind static JSON data okay, with the list view. This is also known as the JSON parsing where we already have some amount of data in the JSON but in the string format in our own file and then we are going to bind it in our list view. Hi, once again. This is our instructor Janice Shah. So let's begin to understand that how can we parse the data. Students, today we are just going to create our new class and uh, what we are going to do over here, we can parse the data by using the JSON object and the JSON array. These both are the inbuilt classes. Suppose if you want to read some JSON object, you can do like this. You just need to write like JSON object reader is equal to new JSON object and JSON object SYS is equal to reader guest JSON object. So you can get this name, name with the string JSON object with the name of SYS and store it over here. And just by clicking on the guest string, put integer, put boolean, so put methods which are used to write and the get method which are used to read the data. Fine, so we are going to do the same thing. So let's move towards the practical and let's see that how can we pass the JSON static data objects to the list view of the Android. So students, uh, what we have today, we I just converted my constraint layout to the linear layout and take one list view over here. Here the orientation of the linear layout is vertical and the ID of the list view is user underscore list as well as the list view width and height. Width is a match parent, height is the wrap content. Here the divider height is 1 dp. Now let me show you the screen for it. So here is my designing view. Okay. Now what I need to do is I just need to show something to over here. So let me just show you first my JSON data. Students, this is my JSON data where I want to show the name, designation and the location. Okay. So here what we have, we have three different things. I want to show name, designation and the location. So to showcase this, I'm going to take a layout resource file. How to make a layout resource file? Just click right click over here on the resource, go to new and click on layout resource file. Just write your file name like live underscore list underscore data. This is my layout resource file and resource type is what type of thing you want the layout file and the root element root element most probably I used to take as a relative layout and just click on OK. It will generate your new layout resource file. Remember this is just a layout file it does not contain any Java file. Okay. So this is my list view file which contains a relative layout where I just need to take the three text views. I'm not going to write the whole code. I'm just going to show you that what we need to want. So I'm just going to take the three text views. Okay. The number one text view that contains I can say the name and number two text view it should contains location and third one contains designation okay so this is how soon as you can create the layout resource file i have already created that file that is known as list underscore row dot xml file so here it is my file where the data layout is there layout width and height is match parent match parent orientation is horizontal if you want to give the orientation then it will be fine otherwise you can skip this tab text view so id first is i want to take the name second one is designation third one is the location fine so what to do where the width and height is my wrap content wrap content text size is 17 dp text style is bold for the next one i want to put the designation on the below of the name this is a relative layout that's why i just put it on the below of the name so i want to write i have to write like this layout underscore below id name and same like this students for the third text view designation what I need to do, I just need to put the designation on the below of, sorry, location on the below of the designation. 
that's why what I did, I just aligned the baseline and on the below of that particular text view. So my three text views are ready. Now let's move towards the main activity of the file. So what is your first goal? Your first goal is to bind all the variables. What we have, we have the list view. Okay, so that's enough for us. Now, what to do next? See, after binding the list view, okay, I'm just calling a method that is known as get list plate data. So, right now, just we do not have any server connectivity. That means we have our JSON data in a static format. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to showcase this JSON static data in my phone application. So, you can pass the web URL over here and get the data as well. But we learn this technique in the next video tutorials by using the retrofit library. But right now, today, what we are going to learn is we have the static data in the form of JSON. So, first, I need to create the JSON data. That's why I create a function which is called as string get list data. It contains a string, JSON a string, which contains like this, see the user's array. How we can say it's an array? Because it's a opening bracket is there. The name, designation, location, and all things are there. Students, if you want to create your own JSON data, then you can create like this. See, this is a, a file. I can say JSON link. So JSON lead is a website where you can create your own JSON data. Either you can as well as create as well as validate your JSON data as well. So first I want to create the users. So users is my array name, colon. This is my array. So that's why I'm going to write like this. This is the array. Okay. Now inside it, again I want to create some ID. So this first, what we want? We want name, colon name is a uh, Janice okay comma what we need we need next students name then designation we need designation designation let me just write like assistant professor and then what we need to write like uh, location let me just write down it's a LJIT. Fine. Now, this is my first data, first object. So, I just need to put down a comma over here. Let me just keep it like this. Paste it over here. So, this is how you can create the data. Let me just like instead of gents like Suresh, assistant professor at LJ MBA. Fine. Now, let me just write down control A, control C and validate it. So support the JSON? No, I just validate, want to clear credit the JSON. And so I think there is no error over there. Okay, so let me just go down. Got it. Okay, just wait for a minute. Okay, error is there on the line number three. Name Janice. Expecting comma and got a string. So okay, let me just check something. So this is over here, this is a name, uh, column should be there and the double vertical comma. Fine. Now, is there any error? Okay. So in every name I had some mistake. Let me just remove the all, both of the data, this whole data and let me just keep this name again, right? copy it again. So here it is, I have created, this is a Sudesh again. It's a L, LJ MBA. Fine. And now click on again the validate JSON. So location LJ IT. Once again, they found some mistake. What is that? Is there any mistake? So, so let me just check my data as well. So after each and everything, I need to put some uh, comma over there. It might be that's why they show some error. So here we need to put some comma. Then again. Uh, we need to comma over here. Now, let me just check the JSON again. Validate the JSON. Now, the line number 12 we have on line number 12. Okay, so this is the end of the JSON object. So, we do not need to write down the comma over there. Now, let me just check it again. Now, it's a valid JSON. This is how students you can create the valid JSON and copy it over here and 
just paste it in the form of the string as well. Okay, keep it in a single line and paste it. I just pasted three different JSON URL over here, JSON data over here. So this function get list data is used to take a return the JSON string. Now, what next? See, first students, uh, you just need to take the JSON data. Then here each and every data contains in the form of the list, but in the key value pair. So what we have, we have the list of the data. Inside the list, we have key value pair, key value pair. That's why we need to take hash map over there. So this is the array list of type of hash map where string string is there. Give the name user list is equal to new array list. I have created one array list which contains the hash map as a list one. Now, just binded my list view over here. Then next, what we need to do? First, we need to create the JSON object. Then we are going to create the JSON array object. So this is my JSON object, JSON object is equal to new JSON object, JSON data. So it will create the JSON data into the JSON object. Convert the JSON data string into the JSON object. Now, next, get user array from the JSON object. See, here your array name is users. See, where is it? See, this is array name is users. So what I want to do students over here, I just need to write the name like json array json array object is equal to json array json object dot get json array is a method which will take the users the array of the users so this now json array contains array of users fine now json array dot length i plus plus now it will just bring out each and every values like this whole value Name, Janice, designation, assistant, professor, name, Ramesh, name, Mahesh. This all becomes together and it will just store inside the hash map. So I'm taking the hash map with the string, string values, user, new hash map. Now, JSON object, creating the object with the JSON array dot get JSON object. See, inside the whole array, we have another objects of the JSON. Correct or wrong? Right? So what we are going to do is we are just going to create an object of I. So it will take the object of i. So the first object we get and from that object, okay, we just need to put the user list. So user dot. So what is user? User is our hash map. So user dot put name comma object dot get string. So name is our new column name for that designation in the location where three values are there object dot string name object dot string designation object dot string location remember here if you have passed location then you need to write a location in the get string method fine now what after adding the all data in the hash map user what we need to do we just need to add this hash map in the list this is my user list just write dot add user this loop will continue again and again, again and again, and all the hash map data added inside the list view. And then at last, what do we need? We just need to create a list adapter, list of new simple list adapter, where first we need to pass activity main context, comma, the layout file, the data that we need to add, the data we need to add is user list, comma. In which layout we want to show? We want to show in the list underscore row.xml. See, this row.xml file contains three different values like name, designation, and location, right? So you need to specify then the name, you need to specify name, designation, designation, location to location. So you need to specify the two different arrays. One with the text view names and second one their ID. So here that I need to I need to fetch name from the user list and set it to the r.id.name designation from the user list set it to the designation and location from the user list and set it to the r.id.location fine at last we just need to set called the adapter if this is not happened then just pass the unexpected json exception fine now let me just run the code and show you the output so see the output here the program is successfully run we can see the janisha ramesh and the mahesha their data see and their designation as well and the location as well fine so this is how soon as you can bind the json static data into your android application as a list view 
So students, in this lecture, we have studied about the parsing the distant static data into an issue. The next total we are talking about the retrofit library. It's a third priority library through which we are going to fetch the data from the website API URL and show it to the user and bind it with the list view data. Till that, if you have any doubt in the session, then please feel free to ask me. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.